Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls. Good morning, our saviors. Welcome to worship. Before we go any further, I want to say a special word of welcome to our guest preacher today, Prairie Rose Seminole. Would you give her a warm Our Saviors welcome, please? She's actually currently serving as adjunct faculty at Pacific Lutheran Theological Seminary, helping them with um, initiatives related to justice and equity and division, or division, diversity and <laughs> inclusion. And so we welcome her. We'll say a little bit more about her later on during the announcements. I also want to draw attention to the envelopes that are in your rows. These are marked for hurricane relief. If you'd like to give an offering today specific for hurricane relief through Lutheran disaster response, you can use that envelope place a check in it, cash, or use your smartphone to scan the code and give electronically. It is God who has brought us here for this very time, from all walks of life, from both near and far. We gather in this room, we gather with those who join us on television and Facebook, we gather together, and that's the beauty of this moment, because together, is how God has created us to be. So as we give thanks for this time that we share, I think it's important that we greet each other. I invite you to stand as you're able. Turn to the people that are close to you, whether you know them or not, introduce yourself with a smile, a handshake, a wave, however you're comfortable. Share the peace of the Lord with one another. When you find your way back, you may be seated, but before we continue, it's also important to address those who are joining us from a distance. We want you to know that we feel your closeness as we gather in this room, and we share God's peace with you as well. Welcome in the name of the one who calls us together in love. Let's sing together.
That is our prayer, but it's also an encouragement to you. Take a good deep breath in and out. My friends, long ago God's grace came to our sinful world to show us that we are never too far from God's healing love. But you know, sometimes it feels as if we are. We wander away from God, we become lost in our own world, full of pride, arrogance, and sin. We feel far away from God, we feel far away from each other, we feel sometimes even far away from ourselves. So together, in this moment, we confess that we have not lived in response to the grace and forgiveness that God has freely given to us. Let's pray together. God of nearness and love, we confess that we have wandered from you in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds. We have not loved you as you have first loved us. We have not loved those around us as you love them. We have not loved ourselves as you love us. Forgive us, Lord, for the things that have come between us and each other, between us and you. Help us to feel your forgiving peace with us now as it has always been. Amen. People of God, hear the good news of God's amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are free to live in the newness of God's eternal love for you. God's peace shines in your hearts so that you may bear witness to the goodness of God's grace and love for everyone. And we say, thanks be to God. of your own 
In that spirit of gratitude, we pray. Almighty and merciful God, your goodness fills all of creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well in body and spirit, we may with grateful hearts accomplish all that you would have us do. In Jesus' name we pray, and God's people said, amen. Brian, come share the word with us. We hear God's voice in the Bible and in preaching, in music and prayer. Listen for God's voice in these readings. The first is found in 2 Timothy. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure, if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good, but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by God, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. To honor the risen Christ in our midst, we stand for this reading from the Gospel of Luke. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Je tu nes dagan, we de gosh te den zagadish, du na he den zagadish, dat di span an daga. Greetings, my relatives. I greet you in my Arikra language. I said, I am thankful to be here. I am thankful to Creator for giving us this day, and uh, that my name is Prairie Rose. I'm grateful to be here in South Dakota again uh, back here in Sioux Falls. There's such incredible history with Augustana and the National Indian Lutheran Board and indigenous people. And if you're available tonight, come hear the presentation I'll have to share more of that history and the relationship with indigenous peoples here in South Dakota. I um, want to speak to these texts. Given them I probably could develop a dozen sermons from the text that we were given today talking about gratitude and joyfulness and space, but given this weekend for Indigenous Peoples Day, I want to speak from that perspective. I want to ask us all to reflect on who are we? How do we define ourselves? What role do you have 
in your community, in your family, even in your own life, right? How much accountability do we put onto ourselves and our responsibilities to being interrelated to one another? Do our actions affect those around us? I think about Paul writing these texts, uh, writing these letters to Timothy. In 2 Timothy, Paul is writing from prison, right? He's writing from a time where there was no religious freedom. He's, yet he's living his truth as a follower of Christ. He's writing from a place of suffering. He speaks about being in chains. He speaks about enduring. And pain, think of those moments in your own lives when you have lived through moments of pain, times of pain and suffering. It changes us. It changes our context and reality and how we perceive others. I like to think we become more kind and more gentle after times of pain and suffering. I don't know, though. I think of Paul writing to Timothy, believing that this is his last time to do so. Right? And scholars have, have shared with us these are the last things that Paul wrote. He thinks about the end of his life and what he's contributed and what he's telling Timothy to live in truth, to remain faithful, right? He starts to think about what have we have done, that legacy, and being seen and being heard during those last moments of life. It's important to be seen. It's important to be heard and valued. The lepers that are coming out to speak to Jesus, and it's an interesting time. I don't know if you know this about Samaria, but this was a place where the half-breds lived, right? They're half Jewish and half pagan. I really identify with this in my own life. I'm half indigenous and half German from Russia. My mom comes from Western North Dakota, German-Russian community. Uh, I think they were Lutheran before it was even called Lutheranism, right? You know, Martin, whatever he's doing, that's who we are, right? They brought that with them. And it was a big deal when the Lutherans started marrying the Catholics in her community. Now think about bringing this big Indian guy from Western North Dakota home to the farm. They were somewhat outcast. It wasn't understood at that time. And... Here, Jesus is walking through Samaria, the home of those who are half Jewish and half pagan. And as an indigenous person, I identify greatly with that. And how do I belong in this church? How am I seen in this church? When my parents started having kids, beautiful kids, I might add, <laughs> the family started to accept us more. And we started to learn more about who we are as indigenous people, but also as Lutherans, you know, going to Bible school, going to ceremony, understanding our matriarchal culture and heritage, um, and that our first being was a woman. And then we learn about Jesus Christ and Adam and all of these stories from the Bible and how we, we compare those to those that we are learning with our other upbringing. My parents never forced any of that on us of which way is right or wrong. It was just this shared way of knowing. And I think about that truth and how we live ourselves and, 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 and Paul writing from, from prison and the Sumerian considered a foreigner. How much truth are we receiving from those in prisons today, right? How much are you listening to those who are incarcerated, right? My brother, my older brother, uh, had a dream of owning horses uh, since he was a little boy. And he got into addiction. And addiction got him incarcerated. And my brother and I, we, we butted heads quite a bit. But it wasn't until later in life, we're in our 30s, and, and he's starting to move away from uh, the, the, the circles that, that moved him to using and to being incarcerated. 
and he got these horses. He got them from South Dakota, actually. It's a long story about a surgeon who was under a class action lawsuit, had a legal file of his assets. I don't know, I don't want to get into it. It's another sermon. Uh, but my brother, the stars aligned for, for him to get these horses. And he knew he was becoming the man he knew he could be. Now, the rest of the family, we'd gone through this cycle before. Okay, he's sober again. Okay, he's moving towards something he's passionate about. And he's trying to get us all involved. For my birthday, he gave me a book about these horses and uh, said, I want you to, to come out there with me. Western North Dakota is building a home site on our tribal lands within our, our tribal community. And they're beautiful, these horses. Now, my brother, struggling with, with addiction, there's still some family members who, who kept using, and um, he kind of fell back into that cycle again. But he knew, he trusted himself that these horses are helping him heal, right? They're helping him heal. This is this, this blessing in his life that he worked so hard for. And uh, one winter day, he was on his way back to Fargo, North Dakota, to see his probation officer, and he ended up in a car accident in a very little town in western North Dakota. And the farmer, whose land he, he had his accident on, he kind of lost control, drove him to the local clinic. And the local clinic, they didn't treat him very kindly. This big, dark, tall Indian guy. And in western North Dakota, it's, it's kind of common. Um, so he thought he could walk to our uncle's. Our uncle lived way further than, than what my brother knew at that time, and with a head injury, he probably wasn't thinking totally clearly. But the clinic had called law enforcement and said, we have a suspicious looking person walking out of, out of our hospital. He's not, he's not accepting care. And so they followed him. And for circumstances we still wrestle with, um, my brother lost his life that day in the custody of law enforcement. And all of a sudden, these horses came into my being. And I remember being so angry of having to deal with the loss of my brother, um, grieving, but then having to go and feed all these horses in the middle of what seemed to be nowhere in winter. And there's no clear road or pathway to these horses. So I'm carrying this sled, pulling it along, and cursing at my brother, cursing at law enforcement, cursing at you know just humanity in general. I was losing myself in grief and anger. And I would get over these hills, and all of a sudden I'd see these beautiful horses just lined up against the skyline. If you've been to Western North Dakota, Western South Dakota, shoot, South Dakota mostly is hills, right? The beautiful grasslands and the scenic view, and all of a sudden you have these horses, and they just start running towards you. That's a moment, right? I forget about everything else, and the only thing that matters is feeding the horses and being around them. And I think of how I treated my brother prior to losing him, and that, that place of anger and sadness, being a a person who judged him and maybe didn't treat him very nice. But God gives us things to do and gives us a, a life to build in our times of suffering, in our times of pain. We just have to believe that if God is saying, take this action, like Jesus told, go see the priests. Take this action, take this step. Trust in that faith. And you're going to be seen. It may not be how we want to be receiving those blessings. Like, I need a cowboy in my life. I need to win the lottery, build a barn, right? I need those blessings. Let's manifest those, right? But it's how we will serve and make meaning of life. So I want to close with just that reminder that who are we? How are we enduring Right? And how are we going to go to God as blessings in this world? I want to close with a song uh, that just asks us all to just sit together, be in creation together, and walk in beauty together. 
It'll be quick because my voice is a little shot. <laughs> <clears throat> Holy Creator, Mother, we ask that you see us in this moment, see us in our moments of humanity. This is a time we have dreamed of, these moments, our work, our work from love of our people's community. We root ourselves in these places, and I ask that we do that now. Root ourselves in the love of all those who came before us, who dreamed of us. Plant yourself and breathe with me. Breathe in this air of hope. Exhale the tensions that no longer serve a purpose. Breathe in the love we are feeling from those that came before us, that love of unity and that vision we reach to. Breathe. When we work in love, we exercise the most important gift the Creator bestows upon creation, that free will. Freed in Christ, for he has seen us, known us, and saves us through our faith, not forsaken. You have given us life and breath and a place in faith. Jadunath Dagan, all my relatives.
Prairie Rose talked about those moments of connection, like coming up over the hill and seeing and being greeted by those horses. Here at the baptismal font is another point of connection where that distance between us and God is no longer, and God comes near. For it's in holy baptism that our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from, from sin and death, by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't understand how it happens, but we do know this. We are born children of a fallen humanity, but by water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. So living with Christ and in communion with the church, we grow in faith and love and obedience to the will of God. So, Eric and Caroline, called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, are you this day presenting Elise to be baptized? I assumed as much. <laughs> I suppose she doesn't dress like this every day, right? <laughs> well, as you bring her to receive the gift of baptism, you as her parents are entrusted with big responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people to bring her to the Word of God, to the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, and to nurture her in faith and prayer so that she might learn to trust God and proclaim Christ through word and deed and care for others in the world God made and work for justice and peace. Do you this day promise to help Elise grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, say, we do. We do. You're not alone in this venture. Standing here with you are Dana and Joe, and I forgot to ask, Kirsten? Yes. Kirsten. There's a couple of different ways to say that. And Caleb. Caleb, how you doing? <laughs> do the four of you promise to nurture Elise in the Christian faith, not by your own power, but as you are empowered by God's Spirit, and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church. If so, say together, we do. Mm -hmm. It's not all on your shoulders either, because there's all of these good people who are here today. So I ask you, our saviors, do you promise to support Elise and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, Convince her by saying, we will. we will. Then I ask you all to stand as you're able. And together let us profess our faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. First, do you who are gathered here today, both near and far, and around this font, renounce the devil, all the powers of this world that rebel against God and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, Say, we renounce them. We renounce them. Do you believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Let's pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for the gift of water through which you nourish and sustain all living things. Through water you saved Noah and his family. You led the people of Israel through the sea from slavery into freedom. And by the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit so that Elise, as she's washed in these waters of baptism, may be given new life. And God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. Okay, baby girl, it's time. Elise Evelyn Nyberg, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Boy, she was just locked in on Mama. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, let's gather around and offer a prayer for her. And in the church, we place our hands on people as we pray for them. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your children new birth. You cleanse them from sin and you raise them to eternal life. So we pray that you would sustain Elise with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. The spirit of joy is already present, I can tell by her smile. <laughs> what a beautiful girl. Elise Evelyn, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Today is a day that we celebrate with gifts, and so, Elise, we give you this gift, which is a prayer shawl that's been knit by somebody in this congregation who has been praying for you the entire time. I can see you like it already. <laughs> but it's a reminder that how, that of how you are wrapped in God's grace and the warmth of God's love and surrounded by the prayers of this community of faith. We also light a candle and while it belongs to her, I think it's irresponsible to give it to her right now. So Eric, maybe I'll hand it to you. Our prayer is that every lighted candle in this space today would remind us of the light of Christ that shines within us and now shines within you. And that people might see that light through our good works and somehow give glory to God who is in heaven. And then also we give Elise this wooden chest that's been made downstairs in our wood shop. And uh, you can keep these items of faith in there and others that will come through the years. And we encourage you to open it up often and tell the story of this day and pass the faith on through those articles that will be all of hers. Well, the last thing to do is to present this squirmy little girl <laughs> to the congregation, and maybe I'll just step out here and introduce to you the newest member of our Savior's Lutheran Church. And let's welcome her with the words that are on the screen. We welcome you into the body of Christ and our Savior's congregation. We rejoice and celebrate with you this gift of new life, God gives through water and the word. Thanks be to God. Well, peace be with you all. Eric, you can blow that candle out now so we don't light the place on fire. You can be seated. Congratulations. A point of connection to be sure. Well, my friends, we have come to worship today from many places in life. We have joined our hearts together in song, in scripture, and now we join them together in prayer for ourselves, for those around us, and for our great big world. We pray, trusting that God is near enough to hear our prayers and compassionate enough to respond in great love. So, together, let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your church, 
You bless us with a variety of gifts to use in ministry. You bless us with diversity that brings us together in beautiful ways we could never have imagined. We give you thanks for Prairie Rose and for her advocacy work on behalf of our indigenous neighbors within our church and our world. Bless her work among us and our partnership together. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, we give you thanks for our world, even though there are so many things that cause us uncertainty and fear these days. We pray for world leaders, that peace would overcome war, that healing would overcome destruction, and despair would give way to hope. We pray for an end to the war in Ukraine. We pray for civility and respect to return between governmental leaders everywhere. Send your spirit to heal your hurting world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you are never too far from us, that you know what is in our hearts. Bring healing to us where we need it most. And to those who have requested our prayers, Elaine Sandvall, Naomi Oltmans, Chuck Quam, and Tressy Siddig. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of new life promised through the waters of baptism this weekend to Elise Evelyn Nyberg and to Ryan Gary Patrick. May your love and grace fill their hearts with your promise of eternal love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, my friends, as we have offered our prayers to God, we also offer now our financial gifts in support of the ministry that God has called us to share. We give our gifts knowing that through them, we help to bring God's love nearer to those in need. So we receive our offering, and we invite children to come and help with receiving the noisy offering. This is my revelation, Christ Jesus crucified. Salvation through repentance at the cross on which he died. Now hear my absolution. Forgiveness for my sin. As I sink beneath the waters that Christ was buried in. Now we 
Even as gifts are still being collected, let us pray. Ever present God, we thank you for the gifts you have first given to us. Now use these gifts we have returned to you, to the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. No greater offering of love has ever been given than the gift of life Jesus gave to all of creation when he laid down his life on the cross. It is here at God's table that we are reminded of just how near God has come to us, so near that in receiving this sacrament of grace, God comes to live in us. So we remember that on the night when our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks for it, and then gave it, broke it and gave it to all saying, take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this so that you will remember me. And then when supper had finished, Jesus took the cup, and he gave thanks for it, and then he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this so that you will remember me. We pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Out of great love, God has come near to us. Come now and find love at this table. Good morning. Thanks for choosing to worship with us today. I'm Justin, one of the pastors here at Our Saviors. As you've heard in worship, our fall series is called Never Too Far. I love this series. Each week we honestly consider a different way we feel far from God and far from each other. And then we get to remember that God helps us close the gap. And that's why I'm talking to you now. I have no idea where you are or what you're doing. You could be cooking waffles or drinking your coffee while you check the news on your phone or folding laundry in your pajamas. I have no idea. So it would be easy to assume we are far apart, but I know you're not as far away as it seems. I believe the Holy Spirit connects us, and I know many of you feel the Spirit of God as you worship with us this morning. But I also know you're never too far away from us because many of you respond to us. You send us your prayers, you mail us notes and letters, you greet us on Facebook. If you've never done this before, you should try it out. Send us a prayer request. Just tell us what's on your mind. 
You can also join the others worshiping with us today by giving a gift to God. You can either give to this church or to the church closest to you. Many of you already do. God sees this. If you want to give a gift to OSL, it's pretty easy. You can give securely on our website at oslchurch.com giving, or you can just text the word sharing to 73256. Sharing, 73256, that's all you got to do. Anytime you give to God any amount, you grow even more connected to the work of God in the world because you become one of the people who makes it happen. That's how we connect our faith to everyday life. That's what we try to do here at our church. And I'm glad you're a part of it too. Thanks for being with us today. God loves you. Have a great week. Thank you indeed. I want to remind you that we do not leave God here at this table. God goes with us out into the world that is filled with brokenness and division. God goes with us so that through us, God's healing might be shared with those around us wherever we go. So let's pray together. God, you have shown us just how close you are. We are never far from your love for you are never far from us. Thank you for your ever-present gift of love. Make us bold in sharing this love with the world. Amen. I've got several announcements I want to share with you today, but I know that we'll leave our broadcast before I get through them all. So to those who join us on television and Facebook, we pray that you will have a blessed week ahead. As you may know, we are selling our rental houses, one of which is sold already, three more to go. Uh, in that effort, we have a need that maybe you could help with. There's like a two by four foot hole that needs to be filled with concrete blocks.
Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com and like us on Facebook. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.